What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Her Lounge podcast. I'm still here. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, so um, before we get started, I want to go ahead and start off with a quote. Um, and so we're going to go with, uh, you can't control how people think, what, how people think about you. It's impossible. But all you can do is control the way you think about yourself. Your opinion is all that matters. So true. So true. Hella true. You know, there was a, I don't know, appropriate. This is, but you know how Bill Cosby recently got released, right? Before this all went down with Mr. Cosby here in the recent years, I used to quote this quote from him that I heard somebody reference years ago, probably like 10 years ago. When he was in an interview, somebody asked him about like, what's the key, you know, to success, Mr. Uh Cosby? And he goes, I don't know the key to success, but the key to failure is trying to please everybody. I was like, damn. Mr. That is Cosby. so deep That's and so, so deep. true. It's like, I think I was a people pleaser before. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that as I get older, I care less. <laughs> and now I know why older people just don't give a rat's ass when they have an opinion or when they tell you something like so bluntly, you're uh-huh. like, damn, no filter. I like completely understand it now. Because I think the older you get, you get to a point in life where you just kind of feel like, I just really don't give a fuck what you think. Yeah. Like I've I've already done enough mistakes in my life to really care what your opinion really is. It's funny because I was telling Pete that for Mickey's birthday, I um I uh took her to the mall, right? And so we went to the mall and I don't need for anybody to tell me that I'm ginormous. Like I completely see it. I see myself naked. No need to mention it. Okay. No need. Like I know it. I see it. I'd be an idiot to not notice how big my stomach is. Okay. I was walking around and I just felt like everybody was staring at me. And I was just like, I've never been so like a self-conscious type of person, Mm -hmm. but I was trying to get self-conscious to where I even text Pete and I said, I feel a little self-conscious walking around the mall. I was like, I can't believe it. I feel like everybody's staring at me. Like everybody just wants to tell me like, damn, that's a big stunt. Like you're ready to pop. It's usually the comment. You're ready to pop. You know what I'm saying? And so I was waiting for her and I was inside um, Claire's. I was like, oh, I'm going to go in there while she's over there. And so I went over there and this lady just finally said, you look so pretty. She's like, I've never seen a person this far along in their pregnancy. She could have said this big or this big, you know, ready to pop, whatever this far along her pregnancy. I appreciate that. Thank you, ma'am. And it's just like that. Look this put together. She's like, I can't say that I was that put together. (laughs) She said, she goes, you look like you're almost done. I said, yeah, I am. She's like, you couldn't pay me to put on makeup. You couldn't pay me to fix my hair. You couldn't pay me to do any of what you look like right now. You couldn't pay me to do that. She's like, I had zero energy. Excuse me. So I could appreciate that. Thank you. If that's the reason why you were staring at me, because those were your thoughts, then great. But I felt like everybody was staring like, you know what I'm saying? And so it's funny because I went to spend on Tuesday. And so I was like, Okay, I kind of felt like all eyes on me and I get it. I like to be in the front. I don't like to be in the back. I never, I'm never in the back of any class. Doesn't matter what it is. It's like, I don't like to be in the back. And um, I sometimes think that it's because I'm recording myself that I think that people are watching like, what does she record herself for, right? But little do people know that this is how I document my pregnancy. You know what I'm saying? Because I love being able to look back at like videos that... I eventually uploaded all the little mini like 30 second videos up to YouTube from where Penny, it was like 16 weeks, 17 weeks, Mm. 18 weeks. And so they're all on my YouTube channel. If you go really far down, they're really fast. Some of them are just not even, it's just like so quick, but I wanted them to stay somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So that was the easiest thing for me to do to get them off my phone and Mm kind of get them. So anyway, um, I got a message that I thought was very interesting and and I it was funny because I could feel like that day everybody was staring at me and I was just like, I know my stomach looks like it's dropped. I totally get it. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, um, whatever. And she sends me a message and she's like, 
I was watching you the entire time. She's like, and I was embarrassed that I couldn't keep up with the class. Uh-oh. Yet I just heard that you're almost due and you keep up with the teacher. And I started laughing. I said, oh, don't let me discourage you. I said, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're here. That's already like, you know what I'm saying? A big it's an accomplishment. accomplishment. Most people don't even get to a gym class. Yeah. Don't get to exercise. Like, I've been doing this for a decade, you know? So I just kind of told her, I said, you know, I've just been doing this for a minute. My body needs it. Th- literally. So that was the first time I worked out in almost two weeks, which right. is, I feel is the reason why my feet had just been awful. And that night... It was like, I saw my ankles again. You slept like a baby? I saw my ankles, but then it started all over because, you know, Mm -hmm. I didn't go. But it's like, um, it's funny how people like, if I ever said, I think I've said this on the podcast before, I wish that I could go back to tell any woman that I ever said like, oh my God, you know, you're so big, you know, (laughs) I, I, I wish I could go back to apologize to them because... I never got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Similar to what we were talking about, the old people. Like, we'd always be like, oh, why are you so in such a foul mood, right? And really, you're just like, oh, I get it now as we get older. But funny enough, last night, we were sitting on the couch. I was I was editing some stuff for RPT, and Don was doing some stuff for her nutrition. And all of a sudden, she's like, does Marisol ever not look good? I was like, uh, uh, I was like, uh, no, not really. She goes, I, I, I guess she was looking at a picture that you might have posted, maybe from the shoot or something. She was like, I didn't look that good. Like I, I wouldn't put myself together like that when I had the twins, you know, when that far into the pregnancy, like might as well always go, make sure that she looks and feels good. I don't like to, I already feel like I'm big. That's what I'm saying. You, you're, you're trying to make yourself feel, feel better, better by, yes. by, you know, by looking better to you. Yes, yeah. to put together. Yeah. To me, together. that makes me, that makes me feel like, all right, I get it. Yeah. You're, you're like ready to just have this child. We, we all get it. We can hear your frustration. You know what I'm saying? Um, by the time this podcast drops, my patrons have already gotten um, the vlog from Waco in Odessa. They've gotten her thing. So um, you will see how my feet are in there a lot because I just like thought that it would be funny to document how crazy my feet look. Rob, Dude. Like, my my toes barely do this. And I have small feet. I like. I mean, I'm a small person, so obviously, right? But like... My toes can barely do this, and I show it. And Pete was like, "You should show my feet. It'd be even funnier if you said, look at my bro, feet.'" <laughs> bro, I just had an idea. You know how OnlyFans for feet are so popular? Why are we not starting an OnlyFans for your feet, your pregnant feet? <laughs> That'd be just if anybody's into that, bro. That is they all weird. <gasps> you should take hundreds and hundreds of photos over the next two three weeks, and let's start an OnlyFans for them. Let's do it, Rob. I'd laugh if that let's shit kicked it. off. Can we do it? I'm down. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm trying to get another friend of ours to do it because she's got really, really tiny feet. She's like four foot nine or ten. And we have another friend who's got really big feet, like Peggy Hill feet, also trying to do it because we know other people that are making ladies. I'm telling you, this is kind of a joke, but also try it to see what happens. They're making hand over fist money on just their feet. They will play in pudding. They'll play in mud. They'll play in Play-Doh. They'll put glitter on it. They'll they'll put paint on it and then make footprints of their feet. And these dudes are eating it up, literally. Ew. You know what's crazy? You and I hate feet. I hate feet. I think feet are the nastiest part <laughs> yeah. of the human's body. I, agree with I you. hate them. Um, I think penis feet are the best feet, but oh, your babies, you can come on. Little. But um, there's these twins on YouTube. They're called the Murillo twins or whatever. And I ran, they get, I, they honestly like, they're so ratchet. They kind of get on my nerves, right? But I don't know why I watch it. How old are they? They're young. They're like early 20s, you know? But they're like, you know, they got pregnant young. Really, I think what annoys me is their voice. They have such a weird voice. And they talk like this. And I, they're from the West Coast? Yes. The Cali voice, man. There's yeah. something about it. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, they're kind of interesting. So I want, when, you know, when I say I want to watch garbage, that's what I watch, you know, Shout out garbage TV, yeah, garbage TV. Um, one of them, I guess must have really nice feet. She never really shows them. Right. Like, I mean, she shows them in her shoes and her pictures and stuff, but, um, she started fans, uh, only fans of her feet. Bro, come on. We gotta I do this. swear. And I was like, why is she doing that? She's, I know she's got to make a killing off of YouTube. But she says she always gets compliment on her feet. She said, like, she'll <laughs> randomly be out and she'll say people will stop her just to tell her she has got nice feet. And I was like, what? Bro. I don't think I've ever gone up to anybody and been like, oh, my God, you have such pr- pretty feet. Like, not never. 
even when I get a pedicure, I'm always like, that's why I tip the pedicure people like fat. Cause I'm always like, I don't know how the hell you sit here and touch feet all, all day. fucking day. I would hate to have your job. Like I couldn't do that. So like I, the pedicure lady, I ain't gonna lie. I always hook her up because I just feel like that's, yeah, it's a tough job. That's a tough job. Especially if they've got like those nasty ass toenails <laughs> and they're sitting there getting that shit done and you got, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Don recently introduced pedicures to Brooklyn and now she likes going, they'll go once a month and get their mm. manicure, pedicure kind of thing done. And she'll get home and she'll be like, look at my nails, look at my toenails. And they're cute, obviously. She's yeah. six. Yeah, like, yeah. that's totally adorable. By the time she's 16, I'll be like, it's gross. Yeah. Stop wearing those dirty sandals when you go to the salon, right? Get new sandals or something. But humans, man, we have some really weird uh, fetishes, I guess, you know? Things that like get you going, get you turned on, or just like trigger you as like a happy thought. And feed is a big one. Yeah, I don't know how that's possible. You know, one thing, though, that I kind of like, except for there's one show I, I couldn't do, but you know, have you ever seen those TikToks of like the 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 um, dermatologist pop like popping? Oh, my God, I hate that, dude. Okay, so I can actually watch those. Don loves that, like I pimple too, popper and yeah. all that shit. The pimple popper show, though, the first time I watched it, I thought that I was going to be able to swap. Like, I thought I was going to be like, oh, I'll be fine yeah. watching this show, you know? <laughs> I was like, who made this show? Bro, it's such a big show too. I saw one of the lady pop something in the person's knee and it just gushed out and she's like, yeah, this was ready to pop. No shit. You think? You think, ma'am? It's gushing down his <sighs> damn leg. Disgusting. Like I was just like, okay, I thought the pimple thing was kind of, like the pimple thing is like, isn't it crazy that this stuff accumulates then this thing you know what i'm saying that's kind of like the weird thing to me you know what i'm saying so but the pimple popper is too much for me it's too much i wanted to um say something uh, all, uh also that's totally kind of on subject off subject <laughs> okay <laughs> i was pete yesterday was listening to bill burr or what's his name yeah yeah, bill burr. Burr. yeah. um He's the guy from the show, right? From uh, from the cartoon yes. show that I like, right? Uh-huh. Okay. I love his... F is a family. F is a family. Guys, if you haven't watched F is a family, it might not be your type of humor, but it is my type. So yes. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Um, we were listening to his podcast because we were on the way to Luisa's birthday party. And um, he was getting on my nerves. Bill? I couldn't, I couldn't get into it because he's rambling about nothing. Yeah, that's his show. And I said, and then I started thinking, so then I put my AirPods on and I start playing my podcast. <laughs> I'm like, what? is this what I sound like? Is this what people feel like? Like skip, 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 skip. Like, bitch, get to a point. There's no point in your conversation. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I started thinking about that. I was like, Pete, I was like, I, I think I'm going to have to start finding structure. He's like, what? Because he was he was looking for the episode where I guess he talked about his, CNN. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he was being he was patiently listening to the entire thing. And I was like, I can't listen to this. I was like, how much? What, what is his point? Yeah. I think he was talking about a watermelon or something. <laughs> it was so random. I was like, what? So I like discreetly put my AirPods on and I like play my episodes and I'm like going through and I'm like, okay, well, this one's kind of interesting. All right. Well, this one's not too bad. And I'm like going through them and I just took my head. I said, uh, yeah, I think I'm probably going to start having a structured, uh, podcast. I was like, because if this is what I sound, if this is like, if I sound anything like him, I don't know how anybody's listening to me. We know that's not true though. I, I, I hear where you're coming from and I, I think it's good that you, you listen to it and you've had your own constructive criticism for yourself or for the show. But Burr's been doing it for literally over a decade, probably just as long as Corolla and Rogan. And they were just talking about that today. Rogan was one of his guests where his thing is like, he didn't have a producer there. His wife sometimes walks in, but he's just ranting about whatever, uh, the article this morning, you know, the Bruins, uh, the, the hockey or sports. And he's trying to make himself laugh. And he's just, he's just ranting. And a lot of the stuff he talks about ends up translating on the stage to bits he's just you know spitting at the mouth and, and it's funny because his yeah. bits are hilarious yeah, he's really so good i think he's great my gosh he's in a that's one thing we've talked about this i don't know have we talked about this on this podcast because i, I feel so. like i'm i've said this before but his writing mm-hmm. i'm imp- I, I love his writing yeah. like i'm i'm really like maybe because i like to write <laughs> i i pay attention so much to the writing mm-hmm. but it's so creative and it's almost like i never thought about it that way 
because he does a lot of that to, for me Great on, in, in his in, in his like um mm. in his stand up. Mm-hmm. I feel like oh that's interesting. I never even like thought about those things. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was like um it was like you know what I'm saying. I thought about that and I was just like okay, I'm gonna have to talk to Rob about this. I don't know that I want to have a non structured um podcast for too much longer because uh, i was starting to feel like this is not yeah i mean shit i'm, I'm down i mean it's it's always good to you know have shows evolve so, at least something right and i know some of you guys were like no we i you know, I'm, i appreciate those that feedback too so for those of you who have been sending me messages and mm-hmm. saying like no i kind of like your you know um you just kind of rambling on. yeah you know what i'm saying it, it we like that better so thank you because that makes my life easier also <laughs> yeah you gotta think too like the way you're saying you watch garbage tv like something to escape like w- like all these podcasts and any entertainment falls into buckets right yeah like you got your uh your garbage tv kind of entertainment you mm-hmm. have your education bucket you have your uh, spiritual maybe like you know uh self-help kind of bucket yeah people go and find those things for those specific reasons i'm not saying that this is like garbage tv but it is the kind of conversation where you can be washing the clothes doing the dishes you know cleaning up the house and you're listening and you're tuning into a conversation that you feel like you're a part mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. versus like i can't be doing anything because i gotta pay attention to what they're talking about because yeah. the stats are good or yeah. the message is really yeah. good and i gotta mm-hmm. focus mm-hmm. so you gotta decide where my soul wants to yeah be. I, I gotta get somewhere in there um i um saw this thing on um by Dolly Parton turning 75 years old. Her hu- I'm sorry, she's 75 years old. Um, her husband's like 100. Her husband's got to be up there too. <laughs> and he just had a birthday. And so she thought that she would reenact her photo shoot from when she was on Playboy when she was, I don't know how many years younger. Super young. She probably was in her 20s. And why does her waist still look like my god because she's got I mean, one of those things on what do you call them those a waist are, trainer yeah. i don't know that she does like because her boobs well i guess maybe her boobs are so high and perfect for like 75 bro that's i mean that's up there in age and her skin and let me tell you something regardless of her having have i'm sure she's had work done obviously right oh yeah she still doesn't look as crazy as some of these women out there who get all these fillers and you know she didn't have that lion look a lot of them have a lion look they start oh, to the look cat a face. Li- yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. start looking like, like weird did. yes yeah she does not have that look and i'm 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 like i need for her to do a this is how i kept myself looking still natural yeah see look at her she's i love dolly parton though yeah no she's a she's a fucking legend yeah she is look at her and so she was saying that she, now she's way smaller than she used to be. She said she was thicker there. Oh, yeah. I guess, yeah, you can even tell. But, I mean, she looks good. She looks damn good. Shit. I don't know what she's talking about. 75? 75 years old. But do you see, look at her skin. Yeah. I mean, it's still, for someone who's had work done, it still does not look that bad. That's wild. That's That's pretty interesting to me. Look at that. She does have a tiny waist. Look, she's not wearing a thing there. You know what? It might just be genetics. Just chalk it up to genetics. And look, she is thicker over here. Look at her. Oh, yeah. She's way thicker over here. Mm-hmm. She sure is thicker. Whatever this was, 70s maybe, she was eating a lot more. She was more on the uh, Marilyn Monroe kind of diet where like cookies and milk and mm-hmm. eggs and whatever the fuck. But, you know, the Marilyn Monroe size was an actual normal size back in the days versus now. I think she was actually, I think, a she 10. Cons- yeah, she'd be considered like a plus size. Yeah, she's days. a plus. For sure she's plus right now. That'd be a plus. And you know what? She was hot. Yeah. Super hot. She's beautiful. Yeah. So like, I don't understand. Do you know when that shift, do you remember that shift happening? I don't. Do you remember where thigh gap was like super crucial and like being able to see your like your fucking lower ribs was like a part of, uh, you know, a beautiful woman? I really don't know when that happened, to be honest with you. Maybe when Victoria's Secret became popular. Okay. Because I can see that happening for the younger crowd. And, and not to mention there were stores called 579 when I was growing up. What's that? It was like almost like a Forever 21, but it was called 579 and they only carried sizes 5, 7, and 9 and then a, a like a 1. It was only odd numbers. Mm. 
So it was like, you know, if you were anything bigger than a nine, bitch, you couldn't shop there. You know? <laughs> it was like, this is not the store for you. It's not the best picture, but I can't zoom in on it. <sighs> It's weird. Like, when did this, and for listeners that are only listening, we, you know, become hotter than this? I don't, these are all older models. Is that Marilyn Monroe right there? And then you have today's, like, popular, not just models, but actresses, too, that are very, very thin. I don't know. When they have clothes on, I'm sure they look just as good. Like, it, they're in swimsuits, right? They're super, super fucking lean. Well, just skinny, not really lean. I cannot be that little. No, some of our bodies don't even let us get that little. Yeah, become I just, emaciated. Yeah, I don't. Starved. I can't do that. Um, but you know, when did it? Was it J Lo who finally made the booty popular, or was it Selena? Selena for sure. But oh, in yeah. our community, or where? I think because she was a. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. She was an. She was like she's a star, like not a, not an international star, but she was a. I guess a, a national star. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's we're not international. So I think no, no matter she what, she was international. If you think about it, because she was performing in Mexico, I don't know about that's Europe. True. So I guess that's she true. would be considered. She was a national star. She'd get she was getting stopped at the mall. Yeah. And people mm-hmm. were knowing who she was, and she was she was thicky thick. Although they say that she's that was a BBL that she has. What? Like, who said that? Like the doctor came out really? like and said he's from Monterrey and stuff. So they say her that's not a natural. <sighs> People are going to come back on this. I this know. Part of the podcast. I don't. Like, know. I don't care if it's not. She's yeah, fucking I, Selena. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, don't, okay. I don't give a shit if, she, if it was real or not. It's Selena. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. Um, we did a photo shoot. Oh yeah, that's right. My, um, for my let's, athletic let's apparel. Talk about that. Um, and it's funny because I was just sitting there watching them, right? And I was just like thinking to myself, like, I wish I could be a part of it. <laughs> well, yeah, that for <laughs> sure. It's my damn athletic line and I can't even be a part of it. And I was going to wear it because that's how much stretch it has mm-hmm. to where I can actually wear the biker shorts. I didn't want to I didn't want to mess with the leggings because leggings is hard to put on, but the shorts are easier to put on, but it's got so much stretch mm-hmm. to where I, I was able to put on, I wear my shorts to work out. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I saw Pete's niece's body, mm-hmm. right? And she's got a big old booty, right? Yeah. And it's natural. Got a big booty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was just looking at her and I just said, isn't it crazy that so many people pay to have like a butt like hers, mm-hmm. right? And I don't know if she realizes like how dope her body is because it's not like she's over there shown it off she is a thicker person obviously Mm -hmm. but she's got a smaller waist you know what i'm saying like you know yeah but and then and then i had a totally opposite model which is natalia right who's way smaller super duper petite and i saw her and i just said i just thought to myself i was like it's amazing we're all so different Mm -hmm. right women are all you have some with no butt you have some with butt you have some with some kind of butt no breast, big breast. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a variety of things, right? And then I started to wonder, like, why aren't any of us happy with the way we look? That's a gr- all right. Let's get into it, Mighty Soul. Right? Let's That's get into really it. what I was wondering. In addition to like, I can't believe you're doing this instead of fixing your child that's about to be born any day now <laughs> you have nothing prepared for her but you're yeah. you're definitely prepared for your day i brought the bassinet, bassinet finally from the storage unit shout um out. shout out to this bassinet but um i haven't i haven't started anything um anyway i was just thinking about that i'm like what what happens to like where does it all begin because i think that there's somebody for someone everywhere, mm-hmm. whether you're good looking or not good looking. Totally. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Because have you ever seen someone who's good looking like a girl and she's with this guy and you're like, what the? How did that happen? Yeah, yeah, always. And first thing I say is like, man, that guy's got a lot of money. Yeah, or a big old what? eggplant. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or like Jay-Z says, there is no such thing as an ugly millionaire, right? <laughs> there is that you what go. he says? There you go. So. Or like, I don't know if it was Cristiano, not Cristiano Ronaldo, but somebody said, they have a, they always use his picture, the uh-huh. before and after, like, you're not ugly, you're just poor. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I, I started to wonder that because it's like, to me, they're, they're both beautiful. Like both my models, I felt like they're beautiful. And I just felt like we all, like there's, it's such a big thing to get like, 
like for me, right? And, and I know someone's going to make a comment, all right? But I found three stretch marks on my side of my stomach. And I have gone this entire pregnancy. I've had no stretch marks with Penny. What? Okay. And I have none until I turned the other day and I was like, are those stretch marks or are those the crease from my pants? I was like, okay, I'm going to jump in the shower. I'm going to come out. I'm going to exfoliate my belly because I exfoliate my belly. And when I get out, I'm going to look again. Maybe it's just the crease from the pants. And I saw three and I'm like, oh my God. I like legit got a knot in my throat from where I was like, I've got stretch marks, bro. Like I've gone this entire pregnancy without, remember I told you though, Mm -hmm. that I've been feeling like my stomach cannot stretch anymore. It's done stretching. Like it can't, it has no more elasticity. Like it's done. Those marks are proven otherwise. (sighs) And Pete's like, what does it matter? What other man's going to look at your butt? I'm like, no, 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 no. See, it ain't even about you, bro. Like, whoa, (laughs) it's not about you. It's about me. Like, it's about me, like how I feel. But you know, what's crazy is that this time around, it's like, I feel like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm done having children. I'm going to put myself together. Like, I'm going to go back to being like put together. You know what I'm saying? And I told Peter, I said, if there's extra skin hanging, I'm not having extra skin. It's getting removed. I'm letting you know, Right, right now. now it's getting removed i'm not having sex and, and i'm not i'm not saying like i want to go have a liposuction that's not what i'm saying no i guess it's is that considered a tummy tuck when they take the skin off it, yes well yeah isn't that like a isn't a mommy makeover kind of that i'm not sure what a mommy makeover is cons- like what it maybe look that up look what that it up, yeah. what what all that is i hear that a lot from ladies that are having kids especially when they're doing their c-section they mm-hmm. get it all done right there and then because you just recover all in one bang But I was like, so after I drop the weight and I get to where I want to be, if there's skin left over, I'm not, I'm not living with that skin. (laughs) I'm not living with it. It's coming off. Yeah. I'm just not having it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I've worked enough to where I want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like I I am where I want to be. I'm healthy. I'm fit. And it's time to get that skin removed because I'm not having it. And As if it wasn't hard enough to find confidence in yourself and then you have all this loose skin. Exactly. Yeah. That makes it really tough. Mm. <clears throat> and then here's my other little guy talking over here. It's like on your shoulder. Yeah. It's like, what? You're going to let some skin make you feel like you're just not good enough. Come on now. I thought you were better than that. Please. Like it's part of who you are. It shows that you went through some war. Like it's all the like opposite things of the things that I think about when I see women transform their bodies. And I think that they were beautiful the way they were before why fuck with it now does that make sense totally so um i was just like oh my goodness i was like for sure my face is getting fixed i'm not having these dark spots on my face yeah that's the first thing i'm gonna do like i don't care about my body right now but this these dark spots because i don't like wearing makeup every day Mm. i only like to wear it like when it's time for us to go out or, you know what I'm saying? I'm Just going to somewhere. Tattooed, like we talked about that. What was it? The foundation or concealer that Ooh, people were getting tattooed kinda, on their face? Ooh, you see how that made me blink? It like did. Just, Why, whoa, we were aggressively blinking. I was blinking. like, whoa. That, just the thought of watching that video. I was just like watching the, the way that they do that. It just made me, ooh. Um, I just don't want to wear, like I don't, my eyebrows are fucking done for a reason. I wear eyelashes for a reason. I don't want to have the dark spots that were left over from this pregnancy. So, I told Pete that for a fact is getting, we're nipping that in the butt. Like we are not having these dark spots. They're going to be gone. I don't know who I'm going to go see to help out with that, but that's happening. Also, I also am not going to like, I feel like what now that I'm older, Mm -hmm. when I wear makeup, I notice that I can see like, my wrinkles more like and i know I don't, i'm not i don't have all these wrinkles but when you smile i have finally have like a little bit of a excuse me like a laughing line and it's just like one little one but you can see it more when you're wearing makeup because makeup creases mm. certain areas so i told people i don't want i don't i don't wear makeup you know that like normally if i have the pot like today i mean i like tried to cover up the spots just for this podcast because it's on youtube I didn't feel like fixing my hair, so I wore a hat. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, so I just, 
if I didn't have the spots, my eyelashes and my eyebrows are done. I put on lipstick. I wear this like little highlighter thing that, and then I look like I'm put together and we are done. Ready to go. But now that I have like a whole patch of this brown stuff, whole patch of this, and it only happens when you're pregnant too. Mm. I didn't have that before. I didn't have these patches. So it's like little stuff like that. I just start to think like, dear God, why'd you have to do us like that, man? Like, So mommy makeover is a familiar term for a personalized set of cosmetic procedures designed to help a woman address common effects of childbirthing and aging on the face, breast, and body to restore mm. and improve upon the pre-pregnancy appearance. Mommy makeovers can include cosmetic surgery, non-surgical treatments, or a combination of both. So it could be anything from fat on the hips, you know, your boobs, your face, uh, uh, loose skin, abdominal mm. separation. <clears throat> so it could just be really just going to a la carte it. Like, what did you have damaged and mm. what do you want fixed? So it can range from anywhere from, what did it say here? I lost it. I think five to $25,000. <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus> Christ. <laughs> Patreon.com <laughs> forward slash. Listen, y'all, I need you to all sign up to go ahead and get this <laughs> loose skin taken up. <clears throat> but and you don't know that you're going to have I like, don't. that crazy loose skin. I don't know how, how bad it's going to be. I just know that I started seeing a little bit whenever I was dropping the weight with Penny right before <clears> I got <throat> pregnant. <clears throat> I was trying to Perfect notice. Timing, yeah, so. no. I was trying to see it and I was like, hmm, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm curious what it's going to be like as I start to drop more. And then obviously I got pregnant. So that curiosity went out the door because I don't know what I, what it was going to look like. <laughs> I, I like how we're pregnant. talking about fetishes and then we're also talking about like uh, self, what, what body positivity and stuff. I, I like it. Like it's yeah. a good combination because I mean, I'm a dude and dudes obviously worry about that stuff as well, but not to the extent that any woman. Like yeah, I know. in their lifetime, they worry about it 90% of the time compared to a guy maybe or 95% of the time. And it's like, I wonder about like guys with bellies, right? They look totally comfortable walking around like. I mean, it's because they know that, you know, women need their seeds. You know, you want to re- oh reproduce, God. you need us, you know, you need the guy. And if he's got money on top of it, you're like, ah, I can climb over that ah, beer belly. All right, he's got money. Okay, yeah. we can get over that. Climb over the beer gut, whatever. Man, yeah, it's it's crazy because I don't know that guys care. like y'all aren't sitting there looking at like, oh, I see a yeah, I see a little bit of a a wrinkle here. There's a line there. I I think I'm gonna go look at the, at the Botox or whatever the whatever it is that you use for oh no or fillers Not whatever it is. It's like you guys aren't thinking about it. You like for me, like right now I'm getting everything prepared f- prepared for me. Like <laughs> I'm gonna go get my nails done. Like I'm gonna get I my eyelash appointment is tomorrow. Like. Mm-hmm. Should this baby come like it needs to be done? I call my little cousin about my extensions. I'm like, hey, can I send you a picture of where the growth is? You tell me if you can come this week or I'll be fine like to wait until after mm-hmm. the baby's here. Because like you can't be just recently burst a baby and then just feel shitty about yourself on top of <laughs> not being able to do anything, not even able to, you know. I just can't. Well, that's what that's what makes me feel better. Yeah, that's what it's all about, yeah, though. That, that's what makes me feel better. And also, you know, like people talk about people that go to the gym, like dolled up, like if they're wearing makeup. Mm-hmm. One, you don't know if they just got off of work. <clears throat> so they obviously already already have the makeup and the hair done. Mm-hmm. That's usually the, the case, or at least that was the case for me a lot of the time. Two, um... Yeah, like I like for my outfits to match. I like to look cute. I don't know that I go put on a full face. Yeah. But I may do a little bit of something, you know what I'm saying? So I don't look that crazy. I appreciate at the gym, it. I you appreciate know what I'm saying? It. Like, like a chick that goes in there that looks like she's getting ready to do a photo shoot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I don't know why. Maybe because obviously I'm a dude. But like Dawn started back at jujitsu and she goes in her lunch hour and she goes all dolled up, right? So I'm sure people are like, Why the fuck? Why you got your hair yeah, everything done? I mean, like obviously smart. I didn't do it for this yeah. dummy. But a lot of people do think like that. And it's usually the haters, the people that already don't feel too well about themselves. They're like, look at her come in here with her hair all done up and her makeup. There was a lady that I used to see at the gym and she had long nails, like really long nails. And she was like totally big time, like manly bodybuilder. She was too much for me, for sure. my liking. Right. But her nails were so long. I used to wonder, like, how the hell is she able to do that? I thought right? you were going to say wipe her ass. <laughs> No, I mean, I like long nails. I mean, I like having fake nails, but I, I really, I like mentally prepared myself for no nails because baby's coming. I know I'm not going to be able to keep up with it. I poked the shit out of my baby and, you know, it's going to be my fault. So, you know what I'm saying? So I already cut my nails down and did the whole thing. But I was, I'd watch her and I'd be like, 
she was dolled up all the time. I mean, she'd wear too much makeup for me. I don't know if she had acne problem or something. Mm. It was like too, too much. That's tough. But her outfits match. She looked cute all the time. And she had these long ass nails. Like, and I used to be like, she needs to give classes on how to lift weights with nails like that. Because when I started lifting, I still did the, I was in an, and as an interpreter, it's really hard to have long nails. It's just like a distraction too. So they don't really encourage you to have long nails. If you guys ever get a chance to watch deaf you on Netflix, it's about the deaf university and the girls that have like the really long nails. Cause they're, you know, they're young. Yeah. They're college girls. You can't help but to watch their nails the entire time. And not, it was funny. Cause I was like, Oh, that's what the deaf feel like whenever you have such, you know, too much happening. But anyway, um, I remember I was, I, I missed my nails. I got them done. I was trying to switch the, um, I was doing the lat pull downs, but I was trying to make the narrow one, the, mm-hmm. the one that's got the two. Mm-hmm. I was trying to switch it out. And when I let go of the, of the little hook, whatever yeah, the, the carabiner, yeah, it caught my nail and it just broke. And I was like, hmm. I like literally just stopped. I had to stop. My finger was throbbing. I was mad at myself for getting them done because I had already experienced having them and they're not working out for me mm-hmm. while I was prepping and all that, right? So I kind of felt like, you know that the shorter nail works for you. I get it. You love the long nails, but right now it's not the right time for you. So it was like, oh my God, I was in so much pain. I legit had just gotten them done. I soaked them off and I was like, take these off of me. I do not want them. (laughs) My point is you just like, you know, when you like to keep up with yourself, Mm -hmm. it's just like, it's part of who you are. It's part of who I am. I've, I've always been like that. Like I've never, I didn't just, just start like liking to. No, you've always been. I've always been that way. So that's why like whenever it's like how do you do how do you stay put together and you're pregnant it's it's honestly what makes me feel good you know what i'm saying like even when i was pregnant with penny like i mean i'm sorry when i had penny my makeup bag would be right by my nightstand if anybody was coming over to to visit i'd be like okay they're coming all right let me put on some makeup on you know before they Mm -hmm. get here and sometimes i would just wake up before penny put on a face because damn you're like just all you're doing is you're like a cow you know, I'm just milking, I'm just giving, feeding her, sitting, feeding, sitting, yeah. feeding, sitting. It's like, I'm not doing anything, you know? So it's like the one thing I felt like I, at least if I got felt put together, I felt like I did something today versus just feed my child. It's funny because I just finished watching all the videos that my midwife recommended. Mm-hmm. I almost want you to post them, even though you're not pregnant. Um, if you feel like you're going to get pregnant, these were the best videos my midwife sent to me. It was really about prenatal. And then it goes into like um, the labor and delivery, right? And then it goes into like postpartum. And it was so educational. It was crazy because for the first time in a long time, I finally heard someone say, I'm not sure why exercising or walking or any of that was discouraged in the past. Maybe there just was not enough studies about it, but she was just talking about how beneficial walking is for you. You should be walking at least 10,000 steps. Yeah, that's everybody. Everybody, all the time. It should, yeah. should be the minimum. Yeah. And you know how many average steps people get? No. Like 2,500 to 3,000 steps is what the average person walks. Really? Yeah. So a lot of the times when you want to you know, start getting into shape, you're like thinking about that, you shouldn't even... Throw, don't throw the whole kitchen sink. Don't start fasting. Don't start the caloric deficit. Don't start an mm-hmm. hour of cardio. Don't start lifting weights. Mm-hmm. Walk more. Just walk a little bit more mm-hmm. and then go from there. And so um, she talked about, it was funny because I feel like, I was like, mm, is this dedicated to me? Because <laughs> then she talked about after the baby. She says, especially if you're someone who's stayed fit, you, you immediately, your instinct is, I want to get back. Totally. But she was like, Please, if you if you can just not do anything for three weeks, she goes, your recovery will be so much better. Like your uterus will go back into place like a lot healthier. She's like, I get it. Baby blues, all that thing is real. You know what I'm saying? Take a five to 10 minute walk maximum. Like, so just... If you need to, maybe just go for around the block with your child, come back, call it a day. That's about as much as you should be doing. She's like, 
And then the Kegel exercises are like crucial too, because it's your pelvic floor. And, you know, a lot of the women who say they pee, if they jump, it's Mm -hmm. because they didn't do a lot of these exercises right after having children, you know? Right. So she was just talking about that. And I was just like, and they're, they're not like, she's not boring. She's like, she was talking about how sex, like how, you know, you're supposed to have sex while you're pregnant. I know there's, you're not in the mood, but try to get in the mood because, you know, it helps, you know, it helps soften everything up just to kind of get it ready. Mm -hmm. Um, She also talked about exercising. She's like, you know, marathon runners, I'm not really sure why they continue to run a marathon, but if you're a marathon runner, you're going to run anyway. So I'm not going to say don't do it. It's just going to be up to you. And she said, weightlifting, there is no problem with the weightlifting. No. She said, if anything, it helps you. It helps to start like opening everything up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, I can get with that. You know what I'm saying? Then I learned that you're not supposed to burp a baby. Hmm. You know how usually you burp a baby from Mm -hmm. the top? You're supposed to go right above the the little, their bottom. It goes down, middle, up. So it goes, Mm. not top. Like every, we always, we always do the top. We hit the top of the back. Mm -hmm. It's bottom, middle, up, bottom, middle, up. Think about it. To help you, it do go, you go up. up. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Wow. Why am I almost 32 years old? I've never heard that. Why is this my second child? And I've only <laughs> heard of that. So she says that's that that actually, those tricks come from like old school midwifery because a lot of these women used to carry their babies on their back. They didn't want them to be shitting and pooping down their back. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't do any of these things or throw, spitting up, rolling down their back because they carried their babies on their back pooping as well so it's like it's a new thing it's funny because she was talking about formula and you know everybody likes they were saying how they prefer formula because the baby sleeps longer yes they're gonna sleep longer because it's got other things in it that doesn't like the baby's still not used to digesting mm-hmm. the way you know it's a it's a newborn so it's not it's still it didn't function that way in your stomach yeah. you know what i'm saying that's why you feed so much more often when you breastfeed because it's so natural, they're able to mm, digest it like mm-hmm. no one's business. So that's why a lot of people prefer, like, yeah, I want this baby to sleep longer because I want to sleep longer. So sure. it's like, yeah. But she was just talking about how doing the little exercises on the belly, like almost like they're stretching, like yoga. Mm. It's like um, you kind of push their feet forward and back like this, mm-hmm. and it's just to help them. Then she said, like, when they can't poop, or they, you're like, excuse me, they pooped once and then you're like 20 minutes, like they pooped again. Like what the hell? I just checked their diaper. Excuse me. So she said, right. We had that little spot, right? where like your, your even for guys, right? Where you're like testicles in right before your booty ends. Mm-hmm. We have like a little area like females do too. Right. Yeah. For babies, you press that little area, not don't do it all hard, but press yeah. it hold the like put the diaper back up and then all of a sudden you'll just hear from where you just help them go oh, wow. and it's like the baby will be so happy like you know what i'm saying you'll you'll it's like a crazy thing i'm like it's my second child and i didn't even know about this trick like what if that made potty training uh, easier later on then she talked about how if you don't know how to give your baby massages right to get on YouTube, if you haven't taken a class to get on YouTube and like learn how to give baby massages, check this shit out. <sighs> Not only does it help their physical like growth, mm-hmm. brain, blood flow, everything. It was like all these things. I was like, what? So it's like, learn, go, go watch it. If you're pregnant right now, guys, go watch a YouTube video or take a class if you're able to. On how to do baby massages to your baby because there's so many benefits of it. And I didn't even know hmm. that. I wonder how, what percentage of your audience has kids and married or with somebody versus mm. single. That's a, that's a survey I'd love to do. How do we do that? We could, well, we could easily ask the on patrons. The podcast, on yeah. the podcast? Yeah. So like right now, since this is the public episode and we're getting towards the end of it, uh, the easiest part the, or the easiest way would be the people inside the Patreon, right? But maybe we can come up with a survey that they can just take you know, and, and we can do it like through a MailChimp. Um, do you, do you mm. have an email? Uh, do you have an email list? 
I don't. You don't? Mm -mm. We need to get that going. We'll put that in your notes too, mm -hmm. maybe, to start uh, an email list for people to just keep in touch for, you know, her apparel, her podcast, her and YouTube. We are going to start a new podcast YouTube, guys. So I'm letting you guys yeah. know that right now. If you're listening um, and you watch, because this is the public episode, and you watch, I am creating a new um, page for it. It's going to be a, its own thing. Um, this is part of the branding that was suggested to me, and I'm going to go ahead and do it because I can. I see what they mean. I can gain a whole different type of audience yeah. by doing that. Yeah. So have you have you, have you made that channel yet? I have not. Okay. So um, I mean, it's on my notes yeah. to do right yeah. here. So um, so you said a, a mail uh, a Mailchimp email list, just like a newsletter for people to keep in touch. You know, maybe they're not they haven't you know dove into the Patreon yet, or they're just starting to find out about the podcast or the apparel or what have you. And I'll, I can make that, that channel really quick. I mean, I'll, I'll put some temporary art up and then you can send me whatever cover art and logo you want to use later just so I can start. Because I'm going to take all the videos, everybody, off of the channel that's on there now, which is basically just... Is it still Money Swole? It's called... Uh, no, it's actually called It's All About Her Now. That's right. You changed it. So yeah. if, you, if, you, if you do go, if you YouTube Mighty Swole Herrera or even if you still look up Mighty Swole Lifts, mm -hmm. your channel will pop yeah. up because of all the tags from the old videos. But now it's... It's what's all, what's it? it's all about her. It's all about her. So I'm going to take all those videos off of there and put them on to the new mm -hmm. one, which is just going to be her lounge podcast. And then we'll go from there. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then we'll, you know, work towards that. That way, you know how to better serve the audience mm -hmm. that are pregnant, that are having kids, mm -hmm. that are single, mm -hmm. that maybe a little bit younger mm -hmm. and really find out that mm -hmm. age range. Because we're at the beginning of the podcast, kind of, we were talking about like, you know, self-confidence mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. I wonder what your audience who are single right now coming out of this pandemic and hopefully not into another one in the near future are doing in regards to like finding a spouse or a partner. And also like maybe they put on that, 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 uh, that CVID 19, right. And they're trying to get rid of those 19 pounds or, or whatever, mm -hmm. kind of like the, the freshman 15. Um, cause dudes, I mean, you could probably attest to this. Dudes aren't that hard to please, you know? Yeah. We like a lot of different stuff and, and we're not like, like most women just, I'm going to throw a blanket statement are much more, particular about the dude that they get with St studies show or surveys show that you got to be a certain height you got to be a certain blah 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 you know all these these criteria guys i mean like i tell dawn all the time she knows before we started dating like i am an equal opportunity employer i just love women <laughs> i love women and uh i mean i know most guys are like that like most of my friends are the same way like they're just like man you can find appreciation in a lot of different sizes and, and types and and whatever so i'm interested in seeing how hard of a time they're having with dudes I used to um, work at a dealership in high school, and the uh, I worked the switchboard. I was a switchboard operator, and uh, I never forget. Let me tell you how I, know, I even still remember this guy's name. His name is Nick Gonzalez. He was how can one director. Call exactly. Um, he was a car salesman there, and he used to always tell me he was like, "If you were at least two hundred pounds bigger, you'd be." <laughs> he'd say he'd always say you'd be fucking amazingly gorgeous i'd be like what all the time he'd be like if you were just 200 pounds bro bigger, nowadays that'd be hashtag me too hashtag me too <laughs> he he dated a girl there that worked in finance uh -huh. who was a thicker girl you have you ever there's a lot of big girls like that though they've got a really small waist and they carry most of their bigness in their butt and legs mm -hmm. so the waist may not be the stomach may not even be really like poking Huge. out. Yeah. It's more they carry in their ass is like this big, yeah. right? That's the body frame that she had. So she was still pretty like. She was like petite up top or like smaller up top. She wasn't like, like a, she wasn't that petite, like super duper small, but she was pretty. In comparison to her lower body. Yeah, though. it was way smaller. It wasn't like she was chubby all over. Mm -hmm. So that was his girlfriend. And I used to be like. Is that a compliment or an insult? I don't really know what to say to that because he'd always be like, "Man, if you were just two hundred pounds, you could be so much prettier." Yeah, <laughs> like I could be. So, and that's going back to like, there's something for everybody. Yeah. You just said, guys, you know, there's men who just prefer a certain look, and I, I totally agree with that. Like I, that's why I was telling you when I was doing this photo shoot, I was just like. I am so glad that I can offer up to a three X in my apparel. And it's taken me so long to find an apparel mm -hmm. line that offers those sizes. Because, guys, I will be honest with you. 
there's not very many apparel lines that out there. They're not trying to be tailored toward that audience. They're not. And that's what triggered this idea. Was I was like, why did I bring it up? You were talking about the photo shoot. Mm-hmm. We stopped at somehow we segued into something else. Yeah, I Bill Burr from that's, there. You go. Yeah, from Natalia and and your other model, and that's a big just in those two. It's a big contrast difference. Like Huge. most, like Natalia is the like epitome of what most athletic wear, mm-hmm. athleisure wear mm-hmm. companies are looking for. Yeah. And now, because of like maybe the political, so, you know, social kind of climate, they are kind of going the other direction a little bit more. But five, even five years ago, you weren't finding that kind of apparel. For I that mean, kind not of too, don't don't go too far. Lululemon for the longest was on the news a lot because they didn't carry, I think, anything ba- bigger than a size eight. That's what I said, and that's in re- that's within the yeah, last five years, and that's not too long ago. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we've come a long way from. You have to be the certain size. To me, it was really important. Let me tell you why. In addition to me wanting to offer a variety of sizes, because I think that we should all look cute when we work out, Mm -hmm. right? I think it also encourages you to want to get in shape. thousand percent. And and to me, it has not... I don't want you to to have this idea of like, I need to look like a supermodel. Or to me, it legit, legit is... How healthy is your heart? Yeah. Because an unhealthy heart means you're not going to live long. You are not going to live long. You're not going to live long to see 60, 65, Mm -hmm. 70. So if you live a healthy lifestyle, I'm not saying to do it for the gain of having, you know, your muscle definition or because you want to look like this girl or that girl, right? I'm saying do it because you want to live longer. Mm-hmm. Do you want to be on medication or do you want to just be able to be free and just live such a like good life? You know what I'm saying? Especially if you have kids. Like, can you yes, keep up with them? Like, I, I had my kids older. So it's I, even more important for you. Yes, it's very important for me. For me, it's like, you know, I just, I, I'm, I'm just, I can't, I can't think of like not being healthy. And I know that there's cases where there's people that's been, that are healthy that have passed just, you know, natural causes. Something may do it. It, it may be as, as little as a bee sting that did it for them. I get it. I know guys, there's, there's situations and scenarios for everything. I know someone's going to, but I know someone that, you know, how there's mm-hmm. always someone that wants to kill what you're saying. Please don't kill my vibe. Yeah. My whole thing with the athletic wear and even with my apparel line, even I go up to, I try to go up to a three X all the time, right? Like if I can't find a design and sometimes it sucks, Mm -hmm. right? If I can't find a design that's available up to three X, I have to look for another style because I want to be able to offer all the way to 3X. Mm-hmm. I can't go bigger than 3X, Okay, guys. so let's, and as we're kind of coming out to the end of this one, coming up to the end of this one, into the premium one, maybe we'll carry it on to the next episode. But to be real with like, as an entrepreneur and as a business owner that's making this stuff, and even maybe talking about Lulu and these other companies, to get to that big a size of material, it costs so much more. It already cost me more to go past, just so you know, Go past an extra large. And that's why companies like Lulu, not to like, not to not to try to like bail them out of this, but the reason they're not trying to tailor those bigger audiences is because it, it's already so much it's so hard to make money in that in that industry altogether. But when you start getting that much more material for big sizes, not to mention that audience isn't even that big. Up until they started seeing people in models that were like a little thicker wearing the stuff, like, oh, that looks cute, mm-hmm. that looks comfy. Mm-hmm. That big audience wasn't looking for athleisure yep. wear at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At all. So you can't blame the companies that aren't tailoring to them. And pricing to to be fair I, I don't like to charge the bigger sizes like you know what i'm saying so for the bigger sizes i sometimes cut up eat up the cost mm-hmm. because i don't want to charge more to the customer who's buying the bigger size like i don't feel it's fair um as a business owner is that the smartest thing to do probably not because you're losing money and you know you're in the business of making money right i mean that's what you, that's why you have a business is because right. you're trying to but um, I try to be open minded and I just hope that whatever I'm doing is to encourage you to be better, excuse me, versus you just like, well, this is the size that I am. So this yeah. is- that's the more frustrating part. When somebody's on the, on the bigger side and has absolutely no, they, they give no uh, inclination that they're trying to like move into like a leaner them or a healthier them. It's just like, this is where I am. Lizzo's my queen and mm-hmm. I'm going to do what she says. And I don't have a problem. I'm a, I don't have a problem with you wanting to be big. Yeah. That's fine. Trust me when I tell you, like, 
I want you to be healthy, like no cholesterol. Like I don't want you to have a high cholesterol. I don't want you to have high blood pressure. I don't want you to be diabetic. Oof. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want you to have heart problems. You know what I'm saying? Knee problems. Knee problems, guys, 99% of the time is because of the weight that your your knees are having to carry. Yeah. So, you know, unless you were like an athlete before and you hurt yourself playing a sport, knee problems usually come from weight size. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if you got lean, you'd have some nasty look, like some really good looking legs. Yeah. I mean, nasty in a good way. Where if you got lean, you see all those girls on Instagram with those big old thighs. Mm -hmm. That'd be you if you, if, if, not you, but that would be the person if they trimmed up because they're carrying so much weight yeah. for so long. They'd have some muscular ass legs. It's just like, it's crazy. Like, um, you know, like m my feet are sore. Like my legs are sore from being so like heavy. It mm -hmm. has nothing to do with like working out. It's like, I'm sore from yeah. being heavy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like your body is tired. Bef if when you when things start to not function correctly, it's because your body is tired. It's a machine, guys. It's just like a car. You have to keep up with the maintenance. You have to feed it good fuel. You have to keep it clean. You know what I'm saying? It's all those things. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but I don't. I'm not saying that. Like, I've never aspired to look like a model. I'll be honest with you. Not even your own kind of model. Like not maybe not in the definition of like uh, current I mean, pop I've culture. Never, maybe I've never liked thin. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? To me, it was more of the athletic. Athletic, yes, that's more of the body type for me. So for me, like when I would see like like a Victoria's Secret model, I'm like, God, her bed, her her stomach's nice, but I wouldn't be like, damn, I wish I could look like that. It's not my body type. Might be for somebody else. It's not my body type either. Yeah. But when I see Kendall Jenner, I'm like, man, I wish I had Kendall Jenner. She's friend. and she's. And she's the right kind of thin, though, too. She is, yeah. She's not, like, creepy thin. Mm -hmm. She's, like, the right kind of thin. So whatever she does, it works for her. Because even though she's that thin, she's got the right amount of booty for her body. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Totally. Like, I don't know. How, I don't know how to explain that. I'm, I'm like, I am quick. I can easily admire a female. Like, I have no problem saying, like, no, no, she's, like, really pretty. And I, and I guess that's also why I also have no problem also criticizing whenever someone tries to give someone so much credit and they've all they've done is go to the, sur like, to the plastic surgeon to get that. Well, yeah, guys, we're going we're gonna to all think that shit's fucking badass because she, it's like she got put, it's like she got built like Barbie. Yeah, it's manufactured. Yeah, I mean, we would all be perfect if that were the case. Hell yeah. I mean, you know, I, and I don't have no problem with people who want to do that. No. If go you got the money. It. If you have the money, go for it. More power to you. But guess what? Doesn't even matter. You still have to keep up with it afterwards. Yeah. And also, if you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. Not if you're doing it for like social clout. Yeah, 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 for sure. I just feel like even when you do that, you still have to keep up with it. You're still not going to have a healthy heart if you don't work out, if you don't eat well. So it's like people think that just because you go get plastic surgery yeah. or because you go get a gastric bypass, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. No, like you're good to go. So now keep up with it. Yeah, because, you know, eventually, just like real beauty fades, like the artificial beauty is going to fade as well if you don't keep up with it. And the, and the hard truth about it is when it comes to men is that we like youth and we like beauty, mm -hmm. you know, and those two usually are synonymous with one another. And as the older the women get, that beauty kind of fades, mm -hmm. right? So that's why guys are usually trying to get the younger chicks. Like I think mm -hmm. it's the Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he won't date anybody over 25 or 23 so he he's like some real young and real pretty, and that's fine. That's Leonardo DiCaprio, wow. right? So you know you got to do it because you want to do it, not because you're trying to get this, you know, trying to land that sure. man. Because mm -hmm. it's gonna fade. He's gonna want the next youngest beautiful chick that he can find and get. And and to be honest with you, even then, skin has to do with what you put in your body, how much yeah. water you drink, are you taking your vitamins, are you working out? So even okay keep up with your your botox if you want keep up with your fillers if you want that's fine too but i mean eventually that's just gonna start looking crazy yeah because it's you know what i'm saying it's not natural your your face is not made to get things put in it does that make sense like yeah. even even like breast implants those when, are all foreign substances yes to the body. our body's not it's not made to accept those things that's what i try to get at like it's like i tell everybody uh, would I would I love to have a big old fucking like BBL butt? Of course, a BBL fucking waist. Of course, breast. Mm, I'm all right. I can I can manage without the breast because yeah. there's I'm just not a 
breasts to me, I feel like are a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, but, like, I, want, I like that question for dudes, like what they're into. It's, it's interesting how different yeah, guys. I just, mm, to me, like I think breasts are just like, ugh. Like maybe because I work out, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like they kind of like are it's bothersome. Yeah. yeah. Um, but your butt, you know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things. It's like, you know, it's from the back. Like I've, ne- and even before it became a thing, like, you know what I'm saying? It was something that was always like, Oh, it I just gives, sure. the, it gives it gives the female body such yeah, an aesthetic d- look, yeah, right? Exactly. Like thick legs with a big butt. It's just the look. Yeah, like you've seen the Incredibles, you know, Miss Incredible. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that's the look. Yeah, exactly. She was made perfect. A hundred percent. When chicks wear that for like Halloween costumes, I'm like, oh man, I shouldn't be this aroused by this fucking cartoon character. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just feel like it's it, because I told you like when I've been told like you know when I do the the Tip Tuesday and someone says something about plastic surgery and you know of course it's always the ones who have had the plastic surgery that get offended, but I'm not, I'm not dogging you. I'm just saying, it's just not my preference. Right. But there, like I said, is there something that I would get done? Yeah. It'd be the loose skin for a fact, bro. Cause I'm not having that nasty ass shit hanging. I'm not doing it, but I guarantee you that I already worked myself to where I want to be to where that skin's going to get removed because I've already worked out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to get that a liposuction fat inject. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing all that. I don't want to keep up with that. I don't want to keep up with something for the rest of my life. Yeah, it's almost counterintuitive to some of the maintenance things that you've already done. So yeah. you don't have to do more makeup. Yeah. You don't have to do more, you know, X, Y, Z. I if don't you, want If you to. start doing the butt and you start yeah. doing the lips and the tits. Everything. And the- it's just like, that's too much work. I don't have time for that. Not in my life. Maybe... Maybe if I was single and didn't have kids, you know, I don't know. Even then, I don't, man, if you were single, dude, you'd be a wild child. Right if, now, yeah. If you were single at yeah. forty, I I need younger friends. Like, you'd be that Thea who's like, yeah, clubbing it up. Totally. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just couldn't do it. So my point of it is, is um, I hope that you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, start to learn to love yourself. Like I think it's so important, and start with baby steps, like. I think that's why um, someone asked, where do I find the balance on Patreon, you know, um, to do everything on? And I said, to be honest with you, I think I finally found that just getting my nails done, my toes done, keeping up with my eyelashes, even though it's a pain to have to like put it in my schedule. The fact that those little things I do to keep up with myself is still considered like something that makes me happy. Mm-hmm. It's how I can I can keep everybody else happy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it starts with you. Yeah, exactly. So it's like if you are not happy with yourself, you're more than likely like not gonna be happy towards anybody else. Yeah. And you're gonna be super insecure. Probably. Your environment's gonna suffer. Yeah, exactly. And I get it. Like your fam like, oh, but I put my family first. Trust me, so do I. <laughs> Trust me, so do I. And sometimes I get mad at myself because I'm like, you just canceled something for your family, right? And, they and you're even appreciate and then you're about to get mad about it because <laughs> you canceled it, right? And they don't give a fuck that you canceled it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's kind of like one of those things like if you're going to cancel it, just be aware that no one cares that you canceled your appointments. Suck it up and then but make sure you put it back in to your schedule yeah. at some point because you're going to be one miserable person. And I just had to do it. For me it's the gym, it's working out. Like I used to like feel guilty leaving Pete with Penny in the evenings, mm-hmm. right? Like, I'm like, I can't do that to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he can barely keep it together, you know? And I'm going to leave. And then I was like, why? He's the fucking dad too. Like, shit, I want to go work out. And if I don't if I don't go do this for myself, like, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be, you know, like. Grumpy. Grumpy and just kind of be annoyed. You know what I'm saying? Just like, yeah, no. You know what I'm saying? That, mm-hmm. that attitude. Mm-hmm. So it's like, no. So now it's like, hey, I already paid for my classes. I'm going to go. I got to go do this for us. Yeah. So this is the time. So put it in your planner because I'm telling you, I'm not here during this time. Yeah. So we, we cool? That's good. <laughs> we cool? You know, Brian Callen, uh, he had a really funny phrase about being, being a parent. He's like, sometimes, man, you just got to realize that being a parent is a selfless, is a, uh, what is the fuck? What's the word? It was, um, basically, it's like not rewarding at times being a parent, you know? Yeah. A lot of times. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, um, I can't remember the phrase, but it's, it's almost like a non rewarding job sometimes. And your kids don't know. They don't know what the, you know, the, what they say or their attitudes or even your spouse is like sometimes response to you. It's like, they just don't, they don't know sometimes how much it sucks, you know? But you got to be a parent. Yeah. You signed up for it. I did. 
Thankless. There you go. It's a thankless job sometimes. Mm -hmm. Most of the time I think it is. Yeah. And that's just, you have to accept that fact yeah. and all those phases of thank thanklessness times, like they will pass. But in the moment, if you don't take care of yourself and you realize how thankless it is to be this mom or mm -hmm. dad, it's going to eat you up. Yeah. And that's why like, I feel like it's you, you have to find that place because um, if you don't love yourself, no one's ever going to love you either because yeah. you don't show you don't show appreciation for yourself. You don't show self love. Then you're not. No one's gonna. They, people are gonna treat you the way you carry yourself. Totally. So with that, we'll end it because. That was good. Marinate on that one. Shit. Trust me, because it took a little bit for me to be like, y'all know what? Y'all, y'all figure it out. I'm about to bounce. Peace out, guys. Dude, let's start the next episode for the patrons with this. I had a thought when you were talking about baby steps to getting, you know, to this, you know, mm -hmm. per certain area of life. Maybe like the way Dave Ramsey has his baby steps for, for, for finances, you should have your baby steps for moms trying to get, or mm. even ladies in general that are trying to get from mm. foggy mind to maybe I just had a kid or I'm thinking about having a kid to I'm trying to get healthy to I'm trying to get into a career path to mm -hmm. all these questions that you typically get on your tip Tuesdays. It's like, all right, this is, you know, her baby steps mm -hmm. towards you know, self-love and all these other things. For sure. So to my patrons, let me know what y'all thinking. Are we doing better? Is this, is this up y'all's alley? Um, so we will be recording guys, uh, before we end, um, check out, um, my apparel line. If you haven't yet, um, we will be dropping some more. Um, and it is coming in August. Don't ask me how it's going to happen with the baby, but it's going to happen. So don't worry. Um, for my, um, patronas, don't worry, your box is going to be coming also. So we're working on that as well. Um, so all those things that are, are pending will be happening. Don't worry, just because I'm going on maternity leave, it's not like it's not going to happen. I will be sitting there pumping. So trust me, my brain will be working. So, um, thank you guys for listening. Um, patrons, you will be the first to know when I have this baby. So my 11 folks that that as of today as 11 of today. as of today because uh, we're doing a lot of episodes in the month of july to prepare yes, for august. so um the ones in august guys just so you know they will be pre-recorded so in case you're wondering like damn did she really just have a baby and already is still podcasting yeah. no we're pre-recording those um because you know obviously i will be out for a little bit but um i do want to give my patrons a little bit more of a, of a um treat uh so you guys will be the first to get to see um baby sunny so thank you guys for listening see y'all soon